So here I am, still continuing my quest to find the perfect Plex Media player. And in today's video, that quest has sent me to Cody. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and like I said, Cody. Now bear with me just a little bit because I basically learned just enough about Kodi to get it installed and install the Plex add-on. Now to give you a little bit of backstory, this is the Azul Byte 3. Now Azul actually sent me a different model, I forgot what it was called, but it was a newer, more powerful version. They loaned it to me, they let me play around with it, and I installed the embedded Plex OS, the embedded Plex Media Player, on that device. Pretty much with that video, my goal was like, can I make the perfect Plex media player? Something that is just only a Plex player, doesn't do anything else fancy, but it runs smooth, it runs quick, it's auto boots into Plex. I mean, it's just a seamless, just dedicated Plex box. Now with the Byte 3, they actually sent this over to me as well to tinker with, and this one I actually did a little bit different things with it. Pretty much I tried it as a Plex Media Player uh, running on top of Windows 10, kind of had mixed results, it ran okay, but it wasn't perfect. But then I ventured into installing PFSense on it, just I wanted to kind of dip my toes into PFSense as it were, and I wanted to see if I could have a dedicated little router that was small and low power. and you know, I was tinkering. In the end, the Byte 3 did not do very well on either one. Pretty much you load Windows 10 and then you do the Plex Media Player on top of it. It was just choppy, it technically worked, but it just wasn't a smooth experience, at least not as good as I would really want. And for PFSense, well, I mean, it's not meant to be a PFSense router. So I ended up buying USB NICs and it just didn't work right, had some issues, yeah. So today I continue my quest and my idea was to, instead of jumping right back into the dedicated embedded Plex OS, I wanted to try out a Kodi build. Now Kodi is kind of its own form of media player. Uh, it's similar to Plex. It definitely has a lot of differences, um, but Kodi actually has an option to install Plex as an add-on to Kodi and Kodi has an option to add on a lot of different things. But in this instance, Plex is one of them and Plex is one that I'm going to use. And the reason why I'm curious here is mainly because one, I've never done a video about Cody, so I did want to learn a little bit about it and, and see what it was all about. And two, if it worked, like I said, you can add on a lot of different things with the Cody application itself. So, you know, things like YouTube or whatever else is out there, you can add on to Cody and you can get a little bit more out of your HTPC than just a dedicated Plex player, which I kind of like the idea of that. So to realize my dream, I went on Google, I searched for some embedded OSs that were designed specifically to just install Cody and boot directly to Kodi with no kind of like tinkering or configuration or anything like that. Just install it, launch it, Kodi. And that's where I found the operating system called Open Elec, which we pretty much just download the little 64-bit generic version, utilize Rufus to create a bootable USB drive, and plug it into the Byte 3. Of course, I went into the BIOS of the Byte 3. I configured it to boot into the USB drive, installed it, and it, it didn't work. Pretty much I just got an error on the boot. I, I didn't know why, again, don't know a whole lot about it. So I thought maybe instead of the generic version, I had to try a different specialized version. So I tried other versions of it. Like I think I tried the ARM version, which is a different type of processor. I didn't really think it would work, but it was worth a shot. I mean, again, don't know a whole lot. Of course that did not work. So I went back to the original 64-bit generic version, reinstalled it, and this time it actually kind of sort of worked. Kinda. Pretty much I got it installed and went through the boot and then it just kept looping and saying that it was unable to start the Zorp server. So after some trial and error here and a little bit of Googling, I, I realized I just, yeah, back to Google. There I found the Libra Elect build. I will post a link down below, but it is another dedicated Kodi build that basically just installs an operating system that just barely enough to run Kodi. I downloaded the generic 64-bit version. I, of course, loaded up Rufus, created my bootable CD and installed it. And it worked. Oh yeah. It was quick, it was easy, and I went directly into the Kodi interface and installed Plex. After I go through and I log in through Plex, I link my account, whatever, I get into it, it ran beautifully. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. Everything that I can come to hope to expect from a dedicated device solely there just to run Plex, except this had 
Plex on top of Cody. But either way, it was quick to start up. It was quick to launch a movie. It was quick to skip ahead through a movie. It was able to take subtitles without it being burned in from the server. All the video files were capable of direct play that includes 1080p, 4K content. And to top it all off, I tested surround sound and I had no issues with surround sound. I mean, 5.1, 7.1, the whole nine yards, everything worked great, all direct play. Just hallelujah, right? So because I'm on this quest to create the perfect Plex media player, everything looks good, I go into the Plex options and I configure it to auto start Plex when Cody boots. And this is where the rubber hits the road. I mean, this is the true test. I, I reboot the machine and by the way, the remote worked flawlessly for that. More on that in a second. I reboot the machine and it starts into Cody again, automatically launches Plex, and then my servers can't be found. I have no idea why. I go back and forth between my username and then the server list and, and nothing pops up. But then I click on the server list, it briefly drops down the servers, and then my server shows up. It's kind of weird. So I'm not sure why I did this. I thought to myself, maybe I just jumped the gun. Maybe I got ahead of myself. I, I, I troubleshooted before it had the option to explore and find the servers and list my server on the Plex screen. So I rebooted the machine again, I let it boot up, and I sat there for probably about a minute no servers listing. But again, as soon as I click the server list, it briefly flashed the available servers and then popped up Zeus, which is my main server. And this is a pretty big speed bump for me. This is where I, I it's the only issue that I was able to find with this entire situation is that it does not find the servers, at least for me, maybe I did something wrong, not too sure. It does not find the servers automatically upon reboot. So hypothetically, if somebody else went down and tried to play something off a of Plex from a, a clean boot, then they might not know how to access the server because it's not listed automatically after they start it up. Sure, I know how to use it, and I'm the one that's primarily gonna be using it, but it's not perfect, and I want perfection. Now, before I jump to the next segment of this video, I do wanna to touch base on this. Now, pretty much Azul sent me the second version of their remote control. That is you know, pretty much paired with a miniature PC like this. That way you can have full keyboard controls right in your hand. It's like a wireless, it's not, it's not line of sight, so you don't have to point it anywhere. Um, but you have full controls. Like you can, you can ha uh, have a little mouse, you can go up, down, left, right, you can right click, uh, left click, home button. It's not a media remote though. You do have a play pause, you do have a volume button, but you don't really have like a skip ahead or a stop or, or really any of the major media controls. And in the video that I talked about with this, I had two complaints. One is that they really, they seriously lack media controls. I don't know why you can't just add a media section down here. I mean, there's plenty of room. And two, in the previous versions, these buttons were super squishy and kind of difficult to push. And this one, I think, I don't know, maybe it's newer, maybe the, uh, the different mold. I don't, maybe it's just mentality. I feel like they're not as squishy as they were. They're easier to push and easier to use. Uh, and or maybe the keyboard underneath the, the little, the switch or whatever is a little bit more responsive. So you don't have to push them as hard. Whatever it is, I feel like the keyboard is a little bit more usable uh, as far as the front, everything else is pretty much the same. But the point I'm trying to get at is the volume button, turning the volume on the device up and down worked with the Kodi version of this. And the power button, I think brought up options to either shut down the client, restart the client, and I think a sleep mode, question mark. But either way, volume, play, pause, power, and this button actually right here, the, the right click acts as a back button when you're in this little, you know, Cody or the Plex. Everything worked with this, that was awesome. So since I was doing this entire thing, I was kind of testing things out, I realized I've actually never installed the Plex embedded operating system on the Byte 3, I only did it on its bigger brother. So I said, hey, why not try it out? And I have to say that the Plex version, the Plex embedded OS is way more updated uh, than the version that I installed on Kodi because the entire user interface was different. It was towards their new interface that they're working on. But either way, I installed the Plex embedded OS and of course it booted up like it should. It auto went into Plex. It found the servers on boot without any issues. So right there, it's already over that speed bump that I had with the Kodi version of Plex. It still plays 4K content seamlessly, 1080p seamlessly, all surround sound versions. I mean, just everything was direct play, seamless, quick. It, it's just a great client with either the Kodi version of Plex or the Plex only version of Plex. The only problem I have is that with the Plex embedded OS version that is not on top of Kodi, it loses the ability to handle power and volume. 
But again, everything ran really fast, really smooth, launched instantly. I mean, you run something like the Plex Media embedded OS that the client on the Byte 3 or something similar to this, it's gonna, it should be a great Plex Media client. But I am far from perfection because of the controls that I have available to me. So I think of where I'm gonna leave off on this video is the remote. Nothing against Azul, they created a great remote if you want to manage a PC from across the room, like let's say on your couch, like in little HTPC, do some web browsing, do some, you know, other stuff besides just using Plex Media Player. It even like lights up when you push a little button on the side, so that's cool. But since it lacks the dedicated media options, in order for me to find perfection, and I think I'm pretty close, I'm going to have to get into something like probably a Harmony Remote. Where I stand right now, the Plex Media Player, the embedded OS, boots up automatically and technically works better in that sense than the Kodi version of it with the Plex add-on installed on top. But I do like the ability of having the volume and the standby and everything on Kodi, so I might just tinker with that and see if maybe I did something wrong or some kind of configuration thing or hell, who knows? You might even post a comment down below telling me what I did wrong. But I feel like I'm on the cusp of perfection. I have a device that runs really smooth. Everything launches great. Fast forward, rewind, everything is there. So I'm pretty sure my next step is Harmony. I just have to get a Harmony remote, get everything programmed to where one remote turns on and off everything in my media center, uh, my stereo, my surround sound, my TV, just everything from one button, one remote, and everything on the Plex Media Player itself is controlled as far as fast forward, rewind, play, stop, volume, etc. from that same remote. If I can do that, I think I might achieve perfection. Maybe. Well guys, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this little exploration of mine. I just wanted to play with the Plex Media Player add-on uh, to Kodi, see what it was all about, see how easy it was, which it was super easy to do uh, with the only one flaw holding me back from using it daily. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, post them down below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and have yourself a good day.